Hey guys, welcome back to Game On. It's good for us to both be here again together. Uh, it's October, meaning that it is time for some of our favorite gaming uh, times because we get to do some horror games. We both like our horror games, don't we? Uh, yes. Why, yes, we do. Yes, of course. We like the, the ambiance of a, of a spooky setting in a horror game. Um, and we're fond of gourds, so there you go. There we go. <laughs> gourds. Um, so yeah, what we thought we would do this time, actually, is do a little countdown of each of us picking three of our favorites uh, amongst sort of spooky horror setting uh, uh, games or, or modules, adventures, pre-written for such spooky games. So what we're going to do is each, in a sequence of videos, um, show you guys our, our picks. Uh, and we'll each do one for each one of the video segments, so there'll be three videos in all. Yes. So today we're going to start with number three. This is going to be our top three picks. And I'm going to start with one of uh, my favorites that I've actually gotten to play in and not just run. <laughs> Ooh. So you know it's good. Yeah. It's called Creep Scrag Creep. So my pitch for this is imagine being on a derelict ship in the middle of a, a trackless sea with something in the shadows that can change form so you never know what it is. Not only that, but it has incredible dexterity and strength. And it can just reach out and grab you and you would be none the wiser. No one else would be none the wiser until they turned around so that you weren't there. So now, cause, can this mimic players and characters and yes. people? Oh yeah. Oh, so we've got kind of a... Um... Uh, for any of you classic horror fans, like uh, The Thing. Yes, actually, that's what they uh, advertise it as. They say it is a, it's a combination of The Thing and Alien on the ship. Okay. Um, it does belong to Dungeon Crawl Classics. Uh, it is part of Goodman Games' horror line. What I really like about this game, I picked it up for five bucks. Mm. Um, I picked it up on sale. Normally, it's nine ninety nine, but they, they're always going on sale. We're bargain hunters. Exactly. And... One of the things I really like about it is that with Dungeon Call Classics, if, if, for those who might not have played, it is designed to start you off as regular people and kill off as many people as possible until the adventurer makes it out. So you play with about three to four people, characters, but most of them die. Okay. Probably all of them die. So in those roughly 3,000 pages of rules is some Darwiz Darwinism in action. They... they... Oh yeah. They weed out the weak ones. That's exactly what the game is about to do, or is designed to do. And that can be a little intimidating for some people, but honestly... Page within... count, too, because that book is huge. <laughs> within, the, uh, within, um, within the first 30 minutes of the game, you're down to maybe two, maybe one character. Challenge accepted. Yeah. Uh, the only thing I, I would wish that they would do a little bit better with the game... Um, this is the module or the rules itself? Uh, the, the module itself. Um, is that uh, it doesn't really allow for a whole lot of roleplay, if people like that. It's mm. pretty much shoehorning you into a si uh, situation, and you basically just get to survive. I smell a customization opportunity. Oh, there is lots of rules in here for customization for it. So, that's, it's, it's an awesome game, um, and if you like the idea of just being hunted by something that you can't understand, and is always Well, who cheating, doesn't? That sounds like a party. Then this. This is a good, this is my number three pick. Okay. Um, cool. So, um, and that's available... GoodmanGames.com or Amazon. But I suggest going to, through Goodman Games. They'll mm. give you a good deal on it. Sweet. Tell them we sent you. Very good. So that's Justin's pick. And uh, so my number three pick is from a, a classic game from back in my era. 1990s uh, called Dark Conspiracy. I've mentioned it a couple of times before in, in previous videos, uh, but this one was put out by uh, Game Designers Workshop, uh, GDW. Uh, they're best known for Twilight 2000, sort mm -hmm. of this, you know, post-World War III apocalyptic uh, story uh, setting. And the other thing that they're known for with that, the uh, Twilight 2000 set, uh, rules is it's a pretty lethal system. Ah, yeah. um, it was designed to, to mimic as realistically sort of wartime things. So, yeah, 
characters are fragile in, in this one. And um, so the Dark Conspiracy rules are very, very similar. Uh, there's a couple tweaks to them, but it's essentially the Twilight 2000 engine. There were a couple of iterations of it. Okay. Um, so this is roughly analogous to, I guess, uh, Twilight 2000 version 2 or version 2.1, somewhere in there. Um, uh, early 90s, 1991. And in fact, that's when the Dark Conspiracy main rules came out. And my pick, which is called Heart of Darkness, um, came out at the exact same time as the main rules. Okay. So this was sort of, you can think of as an original uh, module huh. that was released at the, at the time that the main rules came out. Um, and it is, well, what I like about Dark Conspiracy is it's, it sets this tone of paranoia and uh, foreboding and, and, and just in some of the same ways that you were talking about in yours, uh, it, it's designed to make you question everything. There's nice. this big conspiracy, the world, you know, what's hidden behind the world that we know and see and, and, and fosters that. Um, it is an older game. So in some ways, it's a little bit more, a little less sophisticated, a little bit, uh, not, not campy, not exactly campy, but maybe some elements of it are a little bit campy. Okay. They haven't gotten as, as hardcore dark yeah. as uh, role-playing games did throughout the 90s and into the 2000s. Um, but this was one of the first games that sort of started down that road. Okay. So I think that's fun. Um, and... Uh, as you guys will find out in the next videos, all my all my picks have another thing in common besides being spooky. They are they have to do with alternate timelines and and a look back into the past and and uh, kind of putting players into multiple settings or connecting players to multiple settings time wise. Uh, and that's definitely true of of this one. Um, it. It starts, it's, it's set in modern times, but the, the story itself starts a thousand years earlier. Ooh. And um, the, the, the main hook of it is, uh, for me, is it's a non-linear approach okay. um, to the storytelling. Uh, there, are, there are sections in chapters in this story that connect to various points in time over the past thousand years, mm -hmm. tracing the history of the, the central element in the story, which is the heart of darkness, which is this uh, jewel necklace okay. that has all of this air of mystery and horror and death around it throughout history. Whenever it pops up in history, bad things happen. Mm -hmm. And it's happened all over the world, and things showed up and then disappeared. And so the players have to trace the clues around the globe and through time okay. um, or, or look back at the time in which something happened. But you can do it in any order, which is very cool. It, it allows the, the players to choose which direction they want to go, uh, how they want to investigate, what order they want to investigate, whether they want to investigate all set the clues or they want to like do just certain ones and try and figure it out. Um, so it's, it's, a, it's little, a little bit of a kind of a whodunit mystery okay. element to it. Oh, we've got uh, the neighbors driving out. That's what that noise is. Um, <laughs> it's also a ghost. <laughs> so um, the paranoia and the sort of figuring out the historical menace that this thing presents and what it all means and, and what's going to happen now in the present time when the thing resurfaces again because your objective is to find this thing. Um, builds that sense, of, sense of paranoia and tension and, and so forth, which is nice. nice is great uh, for, for horror themes, I think. I like um, and you, because they, it's mix and match, the, the GMs don't have to railroad the players okay. at all. It's, okay. it's very freeform. Um, yeah, I, I, again, I would say that um, it bears some of the hallmarks of an older style game and an older style module. Okay. Um, but that's not necessarily a bad thing for, no. for old guys like me. Um, and it very much has a cinematic flair to, okay. the, to the scenes, which are great. Okay. So yeah, that's my that's my number three pick, um, and uh, we will be back with uh, another video where we talk about our number twos, and then the third and final video will be our number ones. Yeah. So make sure to let us know in the comments what your number three top three horror 
RPGs, either module or kind of giant setting like that, um, Heart of Darkness sounds like. Sounds like sounds fun. I, I bet it would go three, four, five episodes. Okay. This one. So, uh, so let us know in the comments what your top or your number three is, so that we can uh, can jive in the comments together. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you guys for watching. For sure. And, and let's game on. And game on, and stay tuned because we'll be right back.